Hello everyone, this is Andre Tonelli and for one last time, welcome back to One Chord A Week. Yes, today is the final video of this very long series that we started all the way back in February or maybe even before that. And uh, it's been an adventure, but I think that it's been uh, hopefully enlightening to you if you hadn't really delved deep into chords in your musical development. And uh, today's chord is a bit different from all the previous ones because today we're going to look at a bunch of chords. Actually, we're going to look at eight chords and they all fit under the umbrella of the dominant altered chords or altered dominant or simply altered chords. And uh, these chords are a bit strange and we actually did introduce them a little bit a while ago with two chords which were the, the dominant seventh chord flat five and the dominant seventh chord sharp five or augmented seventh. And those two chords, I kind of warned you when we did those videos that we were kind of getting into altered chords, but I decided to give you those two chords with their own specific video. And uh, today's video instead will deal with all the altered chords or almost all of them, but you know, the main ones that have both a fifth and the ninth, okay? So the seven flat five and the seven sharp five that we already looked at, and here's links for both of them. Those two chords do not have a ninth. So today we're grouping all the altered chords with nine and fifth all together. And uh, it's gonna be a bit of a different format, but I think we should just get started because it's gonna be a long one. The altered dominant chords are a staple of jazz music. As a matter of fact, they're kind of synonym with jazz music, and they certainly have the biggest impact in that style. And I am no expert in jazz music, at least as far as playing it. You know, I've listened to a lot of jazz, and I've actually delved very deeply into the theory of jazz, and I think uh, I would suggest a book for you here that's called Theory of Jazz by Mark Levine. It's a big book, all right? And uh, as much as I uh, usually suggest that people read Schoenberg's book on theory, which is one of my favorites, it deals more with classical theory. And Mark Levine, uh, Jazz of Theory, the, his book deals more with the jazzy side of it. And uh, I found it extremely beneficial because even though I don't play jazz, I have been able to incorporate a lot of ideas as far as harmony goes, as far as structure, as far as being aware of the arc of a certain melody or a song and it's just been uh, very interesting to me i'm a bit of a nerd with that and so all the strange scales i do enjoy them all right so if you want to get a book on jazz theory mark levine's i think is the one and anyway this score you should study because even though it's a staple of jazz music it has trickled down to other styles and you'll find it for example in soundtracks you'll find it in fusion and you'll find you know, this chord in the most unusual places, and some of them sound really beautiful. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you eight chords, and we're gonna talk about each of them. I'll give you the formula for each of them, and the sound of each of them, and then at the end, we're gonna talk about a scale that will fit over all of these chords. So that's a good news. You can use all these chords with just one single scale. All right, so that's the, the dynamics for today. Uh, before we do all that, I'm going to give you just a little bit of background on how and why we're studying the altered chords. The altered dominant chord is of course a dominant function chord, but it has this extra edge and character given by the alterations. And uh, what alterations mean is this. If you have a dominant chord, in case you haven't watched the video on dominant chords, here it is, you have to watch that one. Before or after, I don't mind, but watch it, because otherwise this will be pretty advanced. And the idea here is this, whenever you have a dominant chord, which means a major triad with a flat seven, as, so, as soon as you have that, you are free to alter two notes. And these notes are the ninth, which is the second, or and the fifth. Okay, so here's what happens. You could alter only the ninth. You could only alter the fifth you could alter the ninth and the fifth. And you could alter the ninth in one direction and the fifth in another. And all of these possibilities we'll explore in today's video. What we're not going to look at today is a kind of a more obscure way of doing it, which is actually raising and lowering the same note. So you might have the flat nine and the sharp nine. This is possible and it's, uh, it happens sometimes, but it, I think it's so specific that, you know, if you really get a grasp on what I'm teaching you today, then you'll be free to explore further. But so today we're gonna focus on this. When a chord has both the fifth and the ninth, we're going to look at all the possible permutation of altering these notes. So only altering the fifth, only altering the ninth in both directions, and then altering the fifth and the ninth 
in the same directions or in opposed directions, right? So when you get to the end of it, you have looked at, if I'm not mistaken, eight chords. And uh, the beautiful thing about these chords is that they have the same function, more or less, and uh, the same scale that will work over them. One more thing before we begin. The alter dominant chords are usually treated as a regular dominant, so usually you will find this. They will resolve as a 5-1, so if I have uh, G altered, it will go to a C major, but usually C minor. They're borrowed from the melodic and harmonic minor scales, so that's one thing. You can, of course, resolve to major, okay? But th the idea here is that you go from 5 to 1 and 1 is a minor. You can also go down a half step, you can, like with the Triton uh, substitution, so you will go from D flat altered to C major. That's another um, resolution possible. And then there's a lot more. There's the major third below, there's the minor third, and there's all kinds of stuff. And they really get heavy into substitutions and uh, alternative fun functions of the, these chords. And I'm afraid this will be beyond today's video, okay? But if you're interested in that, we'll, we'll keep looking at this stuff. And probably by the time the video comes out, we might have even studied it a little bit on our weekly Saturday streams. So for today, we're going to look at these chords and you can be sure 100% that you can resolve them 5 to 1 or flat 2 to 1. So a fourth above the chord that you're studying or a half step below the chord you're studying. But there are many options, and my suggestion is this. With chords so rich in, uh, in uh, harmony, such as these, what I would do is try to resolve them to all possible notes. So if I study a C alter chord, I will try to resolve it to D flat major and to D flat minor. I would also try to resolve them to D major and then to D minor. Then I will try to E flat major and E flat minor. E major, E minor. So basically every single note out of the 12 notes I will try to resolve them and see what I feel about them because, uh, you know, music theory is very strict in the, in the classical sense, but especially in modern music and jazz, it's very fluid. And uh, if you study jazz standards, you'll see that people use stuff all the time in the strangest possible ways. And so you can certainly study the application, the, the standard application, but I suggest that you figure out for yourself what it is you like and you don't like. And if you play your own music, nobody can tell you where your alter chords should go to. All right, so that's my bit of advice, but let's begin now with the eight alter dominant chords of today's video. Very well, so for this first chord, all we're going to do is add a flat nine. So out of the fifth and ninth, we're just going to alter the ninth and only, of course, in one direction, which is downwards. And uh, I will show you everything in C. So this chord is C7 flat 9. I said at the beginning of the video that we're only going to focus on uh, chords that have both the 5th and the ninth, and then we'll see what and when we alter them. And in this case, the 5th is just part of the 7th chord, and then we add the flat 9. And it goes like this. So we have the regular 7th chord, which is root in C, major 3rd, of course, E, the perfect fifth is G, and then we have the minor seventh B flat. And then on top of this, we're going to add the, sev the, the, the flat nine, which is one half step above the root, which is of course D flat. All right? So this is the formula for this chord. As you can tell, the fifth has not been touched, has not been altered. So all we're doing is take a regular dominant seventh chord, and add the ninth. So we're lowering the ninth a half step. And uh, I'm gonna show you one position in this video for each of the chords. We're not gonna go through three of them because it will make it endless. And so here's a very easy one and one that is very common. And it goes like this. You have the root here on the third fret of the fifth string. Then you have your major third E on the second fret of the fourth. Then you have the B flat which is, of course, necessary. It's a note you can't skip. It makes it dominant. And it's uh, B flat on the third fret of the third string. You can hear the dominant seventh sound. And then, of course, the D flat, the flat nine, here on the second fret of the second string. Okay? And this is the sound of the seventh flat nine. Now, 
of course you'll hear that B flat, that uh, D flat, the flat nine wants to, if possible, resolve. And this is a resolution, five to one. It's pretty cool. And it's one example, of course, there's many, but this is the first one. It's a dominant chord with a flat nine. Now, if instead of lowering the ninth, we raise the ninth, then we have basically the same chord, but with the raised ninth. So it gets easier as you go through a lot of them, but let's look at it again. So the formula for this chord, again, it's a seven sharp nine. So seven means it's just a regular dominant chord. And so again, we'd have C in the root, E in the major third, G as the perfect fifth, B flat as the minor seventh. It's all the same until now. But now we have a sharp nine or augmented ninth, which means if the nine is D, we go one extra step to D sharp. And it goes like this, root, major third, fifth, minor seventh, and the sharp nine. Now, the sharp nine, you might be wondering, well, isn't that a minor third? Well, kind of in a way, but because we already have a major third and the major third is the standard note for dominant chords, then it's not. The sharp nine is just a sharp nine. It's a D raised a half step. Although, you know, it's an harmonic, so it sounds the same as a minor third, but the focus of this chord is certainly the dominant sound, and this minor third here is perceived as an alteration. And just to leave it here for you, so you can kind of think about it, that's why minor scales, minor pentatonic scales, work in blues over a regular dominant seventh chord. So alter chords really are the key to a lot of um, a lot of cool stuff, but that's beyond the scope of today's video. So let's check out a position for the seven sharp nine. And it's very similar to the one before. We have the root C on the third fret of the fifth string. We have the major third on the second fret of the fourth. The minor seventh on the third fret of the third. And now the little finger goes on the fourth fret of the second for that sharp nine. And this chord here, and the one before, you might have noticed that is missing the G. The G is fine, you can drop the fifth. Of course, only now, because now the G is not altered. If we alter the G, then we can't lose it. But usually on a regular chord, the G or the perfect fifth is the first to go, as you've seen many times in this series. All right, so there you go, seven sharp nine. By the way, you remember the famous Hendrix chord? which, you know, of course, not only he played it, but everybody calls it the Hendrix chord. This is the one. So you actually find this one in blues and rock. Now, continuing with the ninth chord as the basis, and if you haven't watched the video on the ninth chord, make sure you watch it. This is, after all, where all these chords uh, come from for today's video. And now, instead of altering the ninth, we're going to leave the ninth B as a regular ninth, and we're going to alter the fifth. So again, we're only focusing on one possible alteration for now. And so now we have a dominant ninth chord with a flat five and a dominant ninth chord with a sharp five. Okay, and the first one will be lowering the fifth. And the formula for that, of course, is a regular ninth chord. We have the root C, we have the major third E again, we have the flat seven or minor seventh B flat and the D as the ninth, okay? But the fifth now will be lower the half step. So instead of G, will be G flat. So root, major third, diminished fifth, or flat five, minor seventh, and ninth, which is the same as a major second. And that's the formula. Now, as far as the sound goes, you'll notice that it's strange because of course it's not a diminished sound just because you have the flat five, because the third is major. So it's kind of a mix and I actually like the sound. And we're gonna play like this. We're going to play with the first finger, we're going to do a little bar here on the ninth fret. And starting on the fifth string, we'll play the ninth fret here, which is right away our G flat. So we're gonna start on the alteration. Then we go up to the root C on the 10th fret of the fourth string. The first finger again plays the ninth fret, which is the E on the third string. That's a major third. 
and then the little finger will play the B flat on the 11th fret of the second string and then we'll round it up with the D which is the 9th on the first string 10th fret and it sounds like this and you can hear that it's a bit mellower but it does resolve pretty nicely 5 to 1 and of course to minor as well so it works as we said earlier both ways and uh, that's it it's a pretty simple chord it's kind of mellow I kind of enjoy it and uh, it's one you can squeeze in in a lot of places and it's not as uh, in your face as some other altered chords If instead of lowering the fifth, we raise it a half step, then we're actually entering the augmented chord because you remember an augmented chord was root, major third, augmented fifth. And that's actually what we're doing. But we apply it to a ninth dominant chord. And so here's the formula. We have the root C again. Uh, e is the major third. These two will never change throughout the video. And then the G, which was the fifth, will be raised a half step to the augmented fifth. And then we continue with the flat seven. That's another note that will never change. And then we have the D ninth. Okay, that's the ninth or the same as the second, same note. And for now, we're not touching it. We're just altering the fifth. And uh, this chord is a bit brighter and it's a bit more uh, stronger, actually. And it has that G sharp that just the same as it happened with the regular augmented triad, and here's a link to that, you should keep an eye out for because it goes from G, usually in the key, to G sharp of this chord, and that will eventually want to resolve uh, somewhere probably with an A. And if we play this chord, actually, let me show you how to play it, and then I'll show you how to resolve it again to F. And here it is, we play the root on the third fret of the fifth string with the second finger, the major third E with the first finger on the uh, second fret of the fourth string, then we do a little bar here that covers on the third fret, the third and second string, it covers the B flat, which is the minor seventh, and the D. So we have the seventh and the ninth. And then the only thing that's missing is our augmented fifth, and we play that with a little finger on the fourth fret, of the, four, of the first string. Now you can hear, and you can hear this note, how it really wants to push probably towards, towards an F. It can go downwards, of course, although probably not as elegant, but certainly viable. But this is it now for the first four chords where we're only altering either the fifth or the ninth. And now we're going to move on to chords where we alter both the fifth and the ninth, and they can go in the same direction or different directions. So uh, it's not complicated, but stay with me. In no particular order, let's begin by lowering both the fifth and the ninth. So we have a dominant ninth chord, and we take the fifth G and the ninth D, and we lower them a half step. By now, I think you're familiar with the process, but let's see the formula for this. So we'd have the root C, the major third E, the flat fifth, which would be G flat, the minor seventh, of course, which is B flat, and then the D flat, which is the flat nine. So both the, the fifth and the ninth are lower the half step. And uh, here's how we can play a position on the fretboard. This, of course, will remind you of the regular um, nine flat five chord, but here it is. It's uh, root on the third fret of the fifth string. Then we play the major third E on the second fret of the fourth string. The minor seventh, B flat, and the D flat on the second fret of the, th of the second string. F up until now, we're in the same boat as we were before with the seven flat nine chord, but now we're going to add this second fret here on the first string, which is the G flat, the flat five. And before, we could afford to lose the fifth. We did not play the fifth previously, but now because the fifth is altered, we need to include it, okay? So that's why we add this finger down here. And you can hear this chord really pushing 
towards the resolution. Okay, it can be minor, it can be major, of course. Okay, but this movement is uh, very common and uh, actually quite pleasing. You'll notice a lot of these scores sound really strange by themselves, but then they, you know, they kind of take on um, a different sound and air about them as soon as you resolve them. So you start here, you go here, and when you're here, you kind of reevaluate the first one. And it's one of the magic things, the magical things about alter chords and dissonance in general. So this is the one where we lower both the fifth and the ninth. If instead of lowering both alterations, we raise them, we get into a strange chord that I haven't quite figured out how to use, although there's one resolution that I like and I'll show you. But now in this case, we take the same dominant ninth chord and we raise the fifth to an augmented fifth and we raise the ninth to an augmented ninth. So it goes like this. We have the root C, the major third E. These two are kind of getting old now. And then we have the sharp five or augmented five G sharp, the flat seven, of course or minor 7th, B flat, and then D sharp, which is the sharp uh, 9 or augmented 9. So we start with these two fingers on the 5th and 4th strings on the 6th fret. We have our D sharp, which is our augmented 9th, and we play here the G sharp, which is the augmented 5th. So the two alterations are right away at the beginning of the chord. Then we play a little bar here with the first finger on the 5th fret, both 3rd and 2nd strings. This is our root C and our major third E. And then the note that's missing is, of course, the B flat, which is the seventh, and it's a necessary note we have to play. And so we play it on the sixth fret of the first string and check it out. Sounds pretty weird. And the way I use this chord, if I use it to improvise, is I just play over it as if it were just a normal chord. So I like to improvise over it with uh, a scale we'll look at just a little bit later. Because as a, as a dominant, I find it a bit too strong, but you can still hear a beautiful resolution if we go like this. To F major 7th. You hear that? It's pretty beautiful. Now all together. It's very sophisticated and light, and I do like it. It just, I, every time I hear it by itself, the sharp five, sharp nine, I'm like, ah, oh, that's a bit too much. And then when I resolve it, I kind of, I kind of reevaluate. So this chord you see called, you see named as a C7, sharp five, sharp nine, or maybe even better said, C augmented, seventh, sharp nine. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll show you, I'll use the second nomenclature, but you can find it in many different ways. That's one of the things with these big chords, as you progress through them, you'll find that more and more have different names depending on what book you read or what teacher you have. It doesn't matter as long as you understand the structure. One thing I will talk about right now and uh, that kind of has to do with it, the flat five and the sharp five, sometimes you'll see them as sharp 11 for the flat five, which is the same thing, and flat 13 for the sharp five. But I prefer to be able to see them as an altered fifth. So I prefer using a flat five, five or sharp five. I understand that sharp five is the same as uh, a flat 13 because it's the same note, but then I would be thinking of minors and all kinds of stuff. So I rather use the actual name of the fifth and alter that. But again, your mileage may vary. There's only two more permutations to look at now where the fifth and the ninth will go in opposite directions. Uh, the first one we're going to look at will have a lower fifth and a raised ninth. And very quickly now the formula, I think you figured it out by now, but we have root C major third E. We have the flat five G flat, the minor seven B flat, and the D sharp, which is the sharp nine. Okay, so that's the formula. And we, we can play it on the fretboard down here on the third fret again. And it's like this. We have the third fret on the fifth string, that's C, the root. Major third is on the second fret of the fourth string. Then we have B flat on the third fret of the third. And then the little finger we play D sharp um, ninth, which is the D sharp on the fourth fret of the second string. And then to close it all off, we have G flat on the first fret of the I'm sorry, on the second fret of the first string with the same first finger. And uh, this is the flat nine sharp five. 
if we go the other way around, we'd have the sharp five and the flat nine. Again, very quickly, we had root C, major third E, augmented fifth, G sharp, B flat, which is the same minor seven as always, and D flat, the flat nine. So C, E, G sharp, B flat, D flat. The D flat is, of course, the flat nine. And uh, I got this position many years ago from the Mickey Baker book um, on, on guitar and volume one, that's what it was. And I learned a lot of chords from that book, as I think we discussed in one of our uh, weekly live streams. But here's the one I like the most. We have the root on the sixth string on the eighth fret. Then we skip the fifth string and we play the B flat, the, the minor seventh on the same fret, the eighth fret of the fourth string. And then we have a little bar here with the third finger on the ninth fret. And that takes care of the third E, the G flat, the, I'm sorry, the G sharp, the raised fifth, and the D flat, the flat nine. And it sounds like this. And I really like this chord. This chord I actually use a lot. And of course, you can resolve it down to the one, you can resolve it back as a substitute, uh, a triton substitution, you can do all kinds of stuff. But these are the eight chords that make up the dominant alter chords, at least in the sense that we're looking at today, where both the ninth and the fifth are in play, and you can choose which ones to alter, and if you alter both of them, they can both go in the same direction or in opposite directions. So I hope it wasn't too confusing, but let's see what scale you can play on top of all this. I'm a bit concerned that your head might be just about to explode right now, but the good news is that the scale that you can play over this chord is very simple, and it's only one scale and it works over all of them. And it's called the alter scale. The alter scale is a mode of the melodic minor scale, and you know, scales are not part of this series, this series is about chords, but very quickly, uh, a melodic minor scale is a minor scale with the sixth and seventh raised the half step. And if you start from the very last note of this scale, you get a mode, and that mode is called the altered scale. And uh, I'm just gonna play it for you, and you'll see how it includes both the flat nine and the sharp nine, and both the flat five and the sharp five. They're all within the scale. So basically, you can play it over all dominant chords, but more specifically over these altered chords we saw today. If your altered chord does not alter one of the notes, for example, maybe the fifth gets raised but the ninth stays there, it still doesn't matter. You can use this scale anyway and it will just sound like you're adding an alteration, all right? So it works and you can try, you can play any of these chords I taught you today, make a loop of them and play over them with this scale and it works. And uh, just as a suggestion, you can try playing it over any dominant chord and usually you get some pretty cool sounds. But anyway, here's the scale. We have the root, C, then we have the flat nine, which is of course uh, D flat, and then we have the sharp nine, which is D sharp, and then we have the major third E. So for now we've covered this, the root and E, which are part of the dominant chord, and of course both nines, the flat nine and the sharp nine. Then we have the Augmented fourth, which we can look at, of course, as a flat five, it's the same thing. So we have the diminished fifth or flat five, and then we have the raised or sharp five or augmented G sharp. Now, some people would call that uh, an A flat. We'll call it a flat seven. Um, I mean, a flat six, sorry. But I prefer to just look at it. If I'm using it this as an alter scale, then I'm, I might as well just look at it as an alter fifth, which is the one I use in the chords. So to me, I have my flat and raised nine, and my flat and raised fifth. Okay? And then I can just play the flat seven, B flat, and C. And the flat seven, of course, is my minor seventh of a regular dominant seventh chord, which is the basis for all these altered chords. And then C, we're back on the root, and we could continue playing. If you know how to do it, you can play throughout uh, the fretboard. But this is the altered scale. And I'm going to give you this position in full now, and then I'll shut up. 
and this whole series will be done with. But so that just, just so you can practice. Of course, this is not enough. You can then go out and find more positions. But just for you, that you can start working with this, let me play it for you very slowly and I'll give you the actual fret numbers, like as if it were a tablature. You know what I think of tablatures, but here you go. We have C on the 8th fret, 9, 11, 12. Then we go to the 5th string, we have 9 and 11. And then we play 8, 10, 11, 8, 9, 11, 9, 11, 8, 9, 11, 12. And this will work over all these chords that I showed you today. I hope you're not mad at me for this video and I hope I haven't you know, ruined your Tuesday or whenever it is you're watching this, but if you are just getting into this series, make sure you check out the whole playlist. There's going to be a link down here and if I have any cards left, there will be a link up here too. Make sure you check it out and make sure you look at all the videos. I'm not trying to get views, but it's really important you go through all the chords, maybe learn the three fingerings that I show you for every chord except for these ones and try to play with them. At the end of every video, in case you're new to the series, there's a scale section where I teach you a couple of scales that you can play over those chords. And my idea is that you just make a loop of that chord and just keep playing on top of it. Keep playing on top of it, keep playing on top of it. And eventually when you go through many chords, you'll be able to figure out pretty much anything musical that's coming your way. And the other great advantage, and this is the last thing I'll talk about, and I've said it before, the other great advantage is is that even if your style of music does not use these chords, some chords are just too much for whatever style of music you're into, you can still get an idea and a sense of the harmony and the melody that allows you to mold a different chord that is much simpler. So maybe I have just a major chord, but I can go and pretend that it's a major 7 sharp 11. Or maybe I can just pretend that it's a major 6 9. You know what I mean? Even if it's just a major chord, somebody might be playing this, and I can hear this note, as the main note and it will give it a different color, it will give it a different dimension and a different feel and when you go through all the chords in the series and that's why I said you should watch all of them, you'll have such a deep knowledge of really what it is is just musical possibilities that you can add to your playing. I hope that uh, this was uh, interesting to you and it wasn't too much work and if you feel like it, please do subscribe to the channel, like and comment. And even though this series is over, by the time you're watching this video, I'm sure there's plenty more things coming your way. And as always, we'll still be live on Saturday at 6.30. And I'm gonna say now that I'm recording the video, and so I will make sure that I'm still there every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Central European time. In the meantime, have a great rest of the week in front of you, play a lot of guitar, send us some stuff, send me your songs, your links to YouTube, I'll be very happy to watch them and if you have any questions feel free to write them down in the comments below. Thank you very much again for being here throughout this long long series and congratulations for finishing it. See you very soon, bye bye.